Okay, we have a quorum. <clears throat> it's not um, the full complement of the committee, but I think it's appropriate to uh, begin the meeting. So I call the meeting to order. And we'll begin by reading the um, script for remotely conducted open meetings. Um, allow me to introduce myself, Charlie Foskett, Chair of the Finance Committee. This open meeting of the Finance Committee is being conducted re remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the virus, we've been advised and directed to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in publicly accessible physical locations. Further, all members of the public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order, which you can find posted with the agenda materials for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment only in writing by email to Bradley at town.arlington.ma.us.com. And let me interject at this point that we have had a number of um, communications in writing, so there will be public comment. For this meeting, uh, the Finance Committee is convening by Zoom app as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join and comment. Please note that the meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are, of avail are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using posted agendas, the posted agenda, unless the chair notes otherwise. Allow me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. The chair will introduce each speaker on the agenda and after they conclude their mark, remarks, the chair will invite members to make any comments or questions, motions or debate. Please hold until you recognize your name is called. Let me make uh, my normal comment at this point that I uh, delegate to Annie uh, LaCourt or um, Tara Bradley the right to uh, interrupt me if I don't see a hand raised because of the limitations of my screen size uh, on the computer. Please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If you wish to engage in colloquially with other members, please do so, do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. <clears throat> um, finally, let me note that each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote. So allow, allow me please to confirm that all the members and the persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. So members, when I call your name, please respond um, in the affirmative that you're present. Grant Gibeon? Present. Shane Blundell? Here. John Ellis? Micaiah Healy, Brian Beck, Arif Padaria, Sophie Migliazzo. She is here, Charlie. It looks like she's on mute. It's, I got it to work. Thank you. Here. Jonathan Wallach. Here. Shailene Pokris. Here. Daryl Harmer. Here. Annie LaCourt. Alan Jones. Here. George Koser. Here. Bill Keller. Here. Alan Tossi. Here. Wanda Nascimento. Here. Christine Deschler. Here. Dean Carmen. Here. David McKenna. Here. Thank you. Tara Bradley. Here and Annie LaCourt just joined. Thank you. So uh, Annie, you're a designated hitter on the um, 
recognition of raised hands. Got it. John Ellis just joined as well. Okay. So, um, so we have uh, minutes for approval for uh, the ninth and the fourteenth. Um, so the ninth were approved in our last meeting, and I just got a note um, from uh, Sophie Migliazzo that she has some notes to send me on the 14th minutes, so um, she's asking that we uh, po postpone those. Uh, are there any, uh, any of those comments available to uh, make uh, corrections in real time? Sure. For the 14th? Yes, I can do that. So, um, Tara, are you do you have the minutes that you could adjust them in real time? Yep. Go right ahead, Sophie. Okay, it was on um, second page, paragraph six on elections. Uh, when it the eighteen thousand and seventeen thousand was last, uh, I believe it was twenty twenty one. It's not over two years. It was two separate reimbursements in one year. Ah, okay. Is that it? Yes. Thank you. Al Tassi. You're on mute, Al. Could you go to item 13? I incorporated your note here. And uh, you also sent in a note about um, number 14 as well. Right. And I saw. Uh... I was looking to delete the second sentence. I, some 23 budgets include reserve fund monies and the committee is on. I think that sentence should be deleted. I don't know what it means. Uh, 23 budgets cannot have reserve funds in them. Uh, I think we should delete that whole sentence. Okay, is that it Al? Yes. Thank you. Any other comments on the meetings as, uh, I'm sorry, on the minutes for the meeting of the 14th as, a, as amended? Um, Al, would you make a motion to accept the minutes? Uh, I move to accept the minutes as, uh, as modified. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> it's uh, moved and seconded. Any uh, comments, questions, or discussion? Grant Gibbion? Yes. Shane Blundell? Yes. John Ellis? Yes. Makaya Healy? Brian Beck. Makaya, Brian Beck, and Arif Adari are still not here, right? Brian Sophie Beck Mann. is joined. Over here. All right, music. Please uh, make sure your your um, microphones are muted if you're not speaking. Uh, Sophie Migliazzo? Yes. Jonathan Wallach? Yes. Shailene Pokris? Yes. Daryl Harmer? Yes. Uh, Annie LaCourt? Yes. Uh, Alan Jones? Yes. George Koser? Yes. Bill Keller? Yes. Alan Tosti? Yes. Juan de Nascimento? Yes. Christine Deschler? Yes. Dean Carmen? Yes. And David McKenna? Yes. Uh, the minutes are approved. Thank you. So before we get into the um, budget of the planning and community development, I want to make a couple of um, comments and um, and actually mostly about that uh, budget. So um, 
So if, if you've been reading your emails, you realize that there's been some intensive discussion about the appearance of public citizens before the Finance Committee uh, to provide input on budgets, and specifically uh, the budget of the Department of Planning and Community Development after the minutes were posted last week, uh, or after the agenda was posted last week. Um, this may, uh, the whole subject may take some time, this, the whole budget may take some time this evening, so I'm making to some, some adjustments to the agenda within the scope of the open meeting law. First, if we run short of time um, in the meeting, we will postpone the warrant review because the copy we received isn't in the best of shape and uh, I'm expecting that we'll get an, an updated version within the next 24 hours. Uh, I have asked Al Tosti and he has accepted to coordinate the uh, presentation of the warrant with the uh, Board of Selectmen in the town council. So um, we should see an updated and numbered version very shortly. Uh, second, um, with respect to the speakers who are members of the public or not members of the finance committee in general, I'm limiting uh, presentations to three minutes. Uh, in addition, this afternoon, I sent out invitations to all of the people who had communicated to us in writing to offer them the opportunity to speak this evening if they wished. Um, and we had some um, positive responses, which I will uh, speak to in a few moments. My, my constraints in this process are that the speakers must stay within the three minutes unless I rule or offer otherwise. And the second is that proper decorum and civil discourse uh, must be maintained. Some members uh, of the committee and some writers from the public have expressed concern the finance committee may be wasting its time listening to speakers from the public. I suppose I should be touched that there's so much concern about our time inefficiency, but I think the chair can manage these issues. In my view, we're a body of the public and we are never wasting our time listening to inputs from citizens who wish to speak. Some may think in advance that they do not agree with an opinion that might be expressed by a speaker. But whether we agree with someone or not is not a criteria for allowing them to speak. I have afforded the writers on this subject the same courtesy and follow up that I, in, de in detail that I afforded a correspondent last year who wanted to reduce the police budget and increase the health and human services budget. In that instance, it turned out the individual ultimately determined that she didn't want to speak to the committee, but the offer was there. As long as I'm chair, under the appropriate circumstances, with advance notice and serious discourse, I will allow members of the public to address the committee on budget items, just as we do on Warren articles. I heard from one person, quote, the people were considering that I accepted these speakers because I favored their position. That is an unfortunate viewpoint and I find it insulting. Whether or not I agree with a potential speaker is totally immaterial as to whether that, whether the person or whether a person should speak. Whether the subject is defunding the police, the Department of Planning and Community Development budget or some other issue, um, people have a right to speak on these. As a committee, we have nothing to fear from the public. And I personally have the highest confidence in both the budget working groups and the committee as a whole, that the committee will make the right decision in the best interest of the town as it always has done. Uh, I accept the criticism that my choosing seven minutes speaking time was overly generous and unnecessary, but I unfortunately I mentally just latched onto a number that I knew the town meeting used without giving it a lot of thought. So uh, with those comments, I think, um, actually I'm a, we're a little bit early. So I think um, we will get on with the, uh, with that budget, but we'll have to, I think we should wait for another uh, 10 minutes or so. So let's see if we can fit another budget in in the meantime. Um, and on the agenda, we have uh, information technology, treasurer, collector, postage, parking. Um, can we address any of those budgets? Al can, uh, I've got a revision to make on the uh, pension budget. Okay, let's let's deal with that. Go ahead. And Charlie, um, yes. also, sorry. Um, uh, Al, Alan Carr Jones informed me today that we need to revote the fire budget because there was a uh, mathematical error. Okay, so let's take um, the change in the um, in the uh, is the non-contributory pension. 
Yes. Yes. Okay, so we'll do that first, and then second, we'll do the change in the fire budget. Go ahead, Al. Okay, uh, the insurance, the pension budget, as you know, contribute um, is made up of two parts. One is the general retirement costs, and the other is the non-contributory pension, which, as most of you know, has been in the eighteen or nineteen thousand dollar range uh, for a long time. Uh, the one person that has been receiving this non-contributory passed away last week. Uh, so um, there is no longer a need for an appropriation under the non-contributory pension. Therefore, uh, if you have out your budgets on page 152, the retirement cost 14 million 846687 as printed remains the same. Non-contributory is zero. Therefore, the pension appropriation total now is 14,846,687. The offsets are the same. And the bottom line now is 13 million three, six, seven, eight, three, three, 13 million, three, six, seven, eight, three, three. Um, so from now on, our contribution to the OPEB fund uh, will be an even uh, 500,000 that we'll discuss when we get to that budget. So I, I'd like to make uh, that change in the pension budget. Is there a second? Second. So it's been moved and second. Seconded. Any um, any discussion? Questions? Well, I'm, I'm sure that person has has had a long and interesting life. Um, that that individual, or whether I know whether it's a worker or a survivor, but in that those people in that count um, worked for the town prior to 1939. So that's it's quite an age. Um, <clears throat> so and moved and seconded. Survivor. Pardon me. It was a survivor. It was a survivor. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's been moved and seconded, and there's no further discussion. So we'll move to a vote. Grant Gibeon. Yes. Votes yes. Shane Mundell. Yes. John Ellis. Yes. Micaiah Healy. Um, Brian Beck. Yes. Padaria. Sophie Meek. Uh, Migliazzo? Yes. Jonathan Wallach? Yes. Shailene Prokris? Yes. Daryl Harmer? Yes. Annie LaCourt? Yes. Alan Jones? Alan Jones? Derek? Yes. Uh, can you speak, Alan? Uh, yes. Thank you. George Koser. Yes. Bill Keller. Yes. Alan Tosti. Yes. Juan de Nascimento. Yes. Uh, Christine Deschler. Yes. Christine Deschler. Can you hear me, Thank Kelly? You. Gotcha. Yep. Uh, Dean Carmen. Yes. David McKenna. Yes. Thank you. So the amendment on the, um, uh, the non-contributory retirement budget is unanimously. So the next, um, Jonathan Wallach on the fire budget. Yes. Thank you, Charlie. Um, uh, apparently, a um, uh, the chief has a $2,000 step increase uh, this year. Um, and that, that step increase was shown in the salary details, um, but was not included in the summation of the salary total. So the salary total um, for the fire department needs to be increased by $2,000. And therefore, the, the taxation total also needs to be increased by $2,000. Uh, 
So I am recommending that we uh, approve a budget of seven seven four four two zero five. Alan Jones, do you agree with that? Alan uh, Jones. Yes, yes. I went back and forth with Sandy about it, and it was just a one of the usual disconnects between the salary budget and the total and final budget. Okay, so um, any questions for Jonathan? So Jonathan yeah. made a motion. Is there a second? Second. So it's been moved and seconded for seven million seven hundred forty-four thousand two hundred five dollars as the new fire budget bottom line number. Um, seeing no further discussion, uh, Grant Gibbian. Uh, Mr. Well, Chairman, Grant Gibbian has a question. Oh, Grant Gibbian, yes. Yes, thank you, uh, Alan. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, I was going to take opportunity to uh, mention I did. I don't know whether I need to ask it in this budget or any town budget has the line item of electricity in it. But I did have a question about it based on something I heard last time. Um, and that is these departments obviously, well, I shouldn't say obviously, but the departments I don't believe are individually metered for electricity. Um, so how is that allocated? I can't answer that question. I frankly don't know the uh, answer to that question, Grant, but um, I, I have a couple of other questions from the committee that I have yet to put to the chief, and I will add that one to the list. I see that um, Adam Chaplin's hand is up. Maybe he can. Oh. Indeed. Indeed, I was going <laughs> to go right to the source here. <laughs> Hi, Adam. Mr. Chairman, would you like me to try to address that question? Uh, that would be perfect. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I suppose that's that's the hazard of attendance, right? You can't uh, <laughs> you can't you can't let the question go. Um, uh, actually, contrary to what uh, Mr. Gibbian said, each building does have its own meter. So it, some have more than one meter, depending on how large the building is. So for the fire departments in particular, they have their own individual electric meters. So they get their own bills that the administrative staff and the fire department then pay. Great. Thank you. Actually, I uh, corrected and I did not. No, and gave it the. I said it, I corrected the obviously because I did not know that they perhaps did have separate meters. So, so each of the line items are tied to an individual meter or a collection or, of meters or the collection of meters for that department. Yes. Oh, oh very good. Thank you. Thanks for your help, Adam. Um, Grant, is that? Yes, I actually, one of the reasons I asked the question is because uh, these gentlemen were in fact on, in the meeting. So yes, it does answer it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for Jonathan on uh, this uh, revised budget? Okay, um, moving to a vote, Grant Gibbian. Yes. Shane Blundell. Yes. John Ellis. Yes. Brian Beck. Yes. Sophie Migliazzo. Yes. Jonathan Wallach. Yes. Uh, Shailene Pokris. Yes. Daryl Harmer. Yes. Annie LaCourt. Yes. Alan Jones. Yes. Uh, George Koser. Yes. William Keller. Yes. Um, Alan Tosti. Yes. Wanda Nascimento. Yes. Christine Deschler. Yes. Dean Carmen. Yes. And David McKenna. Yes. Thank you. It's the unanimous vote uh, to modify the fire department budget as presented by Jonathan. Okay. Um, I think it's an appropriate time to move to this discussion of the planning and community development uh, budget. <clears throat> um, I, the, the first item on the agenda was an overview of the citizens communications which I pretty much uh, gave in my opening remarks. Let me say that today I sent out about, uh, I, I think it was 10, I can't be sure, Tara would probably know, uh, 10 emails to people who had written um, letters to the committee since um, the uh, agenda was posted last Thursday. And I had a discussion with, um, and at the same time uh, last week, 
uh, the town manager asked to speak at this meeting as well. And uh, I was concerned about whether or not we might be violating the open meeting law. So I had a conversation with Sandy Pooler, who uh, generously approached uh, town council about this because I was tied up in meetings this morning. And if I can just put it in my layman's terms, it appears that um, the requirement for 48 hour notice is on the subjects to be discussed uh, at a public meeting, not necessarily uh, the, the speakers, okay? So uh, having had that information this afternoon, I sent out these uh, numerous uh, emails inviting um, the people who sent the emails to speak tonight and um, asked that they respond by um, a time certain and uh, with whether or not they, or if they were interested in speaking and they did. So in addition to the original speakers that we had on the agenda of um, Carl Wagner and Patricia Warden, um, I count uh, in the responses, Jennifer Seuss, Joseph Solomon, Eileen Cahill, and then uh, Adam Chaplin and Sandy Pooler. Tara, did you have any other names that came in before six o'clock? I did not, no. Okay, thank you. So uh, is Carl Wagner, oh, let me also ask, uh, which I didn't do during the uh, take, taking of the minutes, I, I noticed that there are some members of the public here that, are, uh, that aren't on this list of names that I just read. Could you please identify yourselves for the minutes of the meeting? Um, I see Michelle Orfanos. Michelle? Okay, I see Michelle is connected, but she's, and Joanne Preston, Joanne? Jo so Joanne Preston is here. Uh, Carl, uh, Carl Regner is here. Um, I'm just saying my name. Sandy Pooler, Rebecca Gruber, Eileen Cahill, Barbara Thornton, Maureen Nee, Dolores McGee, uh, David Lee, Gina Car Carmi or Carme, uh, Joseph Solomon, Michelle. Limp, Jennifer Lovett, Winnell Evans. I think that's it. Is there anyone, any visitor whose name? Patricia, Patricia Warden. Oh, I'm sorry, Patricia Warden. I, well, I did mention her name a few minutes ago. Thank you, Patricia Warden. Altasi, you have your hand up? Yes. Uh... I just wanted to ask a question of you, Mr. Chairman, before we start. Um, to your knowledge, as the working group that is going to recommend this budget, or any member of the Finance Committee recommended a reduction in this budget? Not to my knowledge. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Andy, I would appreciate if you kept your eye on this on the personnel here because I can't get everybody on one screen. No, I'm, I'm trolling. Thank you. Okay, so uh, with respect to the public speakers, let's proceed uh, in the order that uh, we receive their names and requests, uh, starting with Carl Wagner. Carl, are you? Yes, I see you there. Could you please uh, go ahead and uh, you know contain your comments to within three minutes, please. All right, I'm on an iPhone. Hopefully you can hear me. I had a little bit of uh, trouble setting up. But anyway, my name is Carl Wagner. I live on Edge Hill Road in Arlington. Uh, thank you very much to the chair and the committee for allowing me to address you following my email to you of February 11th, I think. I, I re would request that you would modestly reduce or freeze the budget of the planning department at the total funds plus CDBG level, grant level of last year. My concern is that the department should be producing internal conclusions based on staff member produced work, except in very specialized, highly technical cases. I believe the staff has a, a staff of nine or more currently, while our town has been fully built out for years, and while we face a structural problem in our budgets that we need to address by controlling spending better. In addition to frequently uh, 
paying for consultant studies, the planning department staff appear at nearly all town boards, committees, subcommittees that I've attended, and they seem to have enough time to engage in monitoring public opinion. Instead of that activity, I would ask the planning staff mm -hmm. offer their own reports and spend less time appearing in direct public opinion. I've lived in the town 24 years and I grew up here. After I moved back to town, I'm proud to have been a town meeting member for over 10 years in different precincts. And we're all very lucky to have you, the members of the volunteer uh, finance committee. So thank you for that. This town really is of and by and for its people. I never felt I had to pay attention to the planning to budget in the past, but recently I've noticed that the use of consultant produced reports has really grown. In addition to the extra cost, using consultant studies seems to function as a way to push through changes without the responsibility for such changes being attributed to department staff. A good example is the housing production plan. This was completed by a consultant who also worked on our master plan. Oops, sorry about that. We'll just kill that. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the problem with it has, has many levels. Consultant uh, did, didn't address a number of Commonwealth required subjects and effects on infrastructure and services weren't uh, considered. And then finally, it produced major decisions that uh, Arlington residents, not planning staff, deserve to be the deciders of. For example, among other things, it called for ending single family zoning. The plan was uh, voted in a public meeting of the redevelopment board, but the public really never had a chance to approve it in any body. And uh, the final version of the plan wasn't even seen by the public and possibly not even by the redevelopment board. And to everybody's surprise, the final version also got rid of two family zoning, supposedly as a recommendation by allowing three family units. Anyway, the, the, the point I would make is that the, the planning department is paid for by the existing residents and businesses of Arlington. And the, the work it does uh, really has to go along the stated goals of those in town meeting, the people who are elected on the select board and the people who live here. The, the, plan, the planning department really should be working better so that it's for the people of Arlington and doing the work of those people only. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carl. Uh, the next uh, presenter is uh, Patricia Warden. Mrs. Warden? Um, thank you. Um, Mr. Foskett, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you very much. Patricia Warden, Jersey Street, town meeting member, precinct eight. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. I came to the United States when I graduated from the University of Glasgow in Scotland and to Arlington after earning a couple of degrees at Harvard. Um, I also served in the Arlington School Committee as member and chair, and then the Arlington Housing Authority as member and chair. I served on many other committees and commissions, including the Human Rights Commission. I can tell you more about myself later on, but I want to stick to my three minutes. So tonight, I urge you to take special care with the effects of the planning department's budget on the town, particularly with respect to their major goal which is to drive up residential density. The alleged reasons for this drive to maximum density are twofold. <laughs> First, it would increase affordability, but that is false. It will, and indeed is even now decreasing affordability. The second alleged reason for the drive for thousands more residential units is that it will increase diversity, but that also is false. It will decrease diversity drastically and with expected gentrification. I believe Ms. Cato has already sent a letter for your consideration, pointing out damaging effects that drastic density increases can have on infrastructure and, over, and, and sewage and overwhelming such structures. I am dealing with only one, only one crucially important issue, which is the effect of increasing density on school costs. Our five children were educated entirely in the Arlington Public Schools, and one of our 13 grandchildren is currently in the system. So I know Arlington Public Schools well. It takes a lot to ensure good education. Our school budget is increasing faster than other budgets. Already the outlook is for increased taxes and humongous overrides. Driving up residential density could exacerbate school costs greatly. New elementary schools 
may be needed at around $50 million each. Please consider the increasing tax burden the planning department's outsized budget and staffing will have enabled if their relentless drive for thousands more residential units is successful. Please scrutinize their somewhat um, oversized budget. We don't want- Mrs. Warden, uh, your, time is, your time is up. Any more residents of modest means. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, the, the next speaker is uh, Jennifer Seuss. Jennifer? Yes, um, I see Altasi has his hand up. Do you want me to- you Hang on one second, please. Um, yeah. Altasi, do you have your hand up? Yes, I just wanted to ask a quick question of Mr. Wagner. Uh, let's wait until all the speakers have presented, if that's all right. Well, it just, I, I didn't hear of any changes to the budget, which is the only thing before us. If he doesn't want to make any changes into the budget. Okay, uh, Al, I, I, I've, I've allowed them to speak. Thank you. Um, Jennifer, sorry, yes. I didn't mean, mean to interrupt you. No worries, no worries. Um, uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk. Um, uh, Arlington is blessed with having some really good people who work in the department's uh, professional people, um, as I'm sure you know, um, despite the fact that they don't get at top salary as much as some other towns. I mean, we are really blessed with that. And I think that has a lot to do with the respect that they feel both from the town manager and from the finance committee. I think this has been a body who has shown our professional staff a tremendous amount of respect um, at, for their professionalism. And I worry that this move, this feels very different, that the move to cut a department for what seems like ideological reasons will have ripple effects throughout many other departments um, and will lead to losing some really good people. Um, and I don't think that's what we want. Uh, so I'd urge you to not um, cut a department because of not liking certain things uh, that, that they're doing. Um, I also just want to speak to a couple more things. Um, one is on my work in the school committee, um, you know, as the population grew, we didn't always add things equally because sometimes there was a need in a place that didn't exist 10 years ago. And so the fact that the planning department has added positions in light of different kinds of needs that we have, um, different kinds of needs that the residents are frankly asking for, um, makes a lot of sense to me. Um, and I think that those decisions were made carefully over many years with lots of consultation between uh, this committee, the uh, town manager's office, professional staff. And again, I just urge you not to sort of undermine that relationship that I think has been really positive and really good throughout the years. Um, just wanted to mention one more thing. Oh, uh, the, the housing production plan, I think is very good. I saw it a couple months before. It's, it was on the town website for a couple months. Um, it was promoted heavily. Uh, it, this wasn't done behind anyone's back. Um, I know, and, and it did not stipulate that any particular action get taken. Any zoning change we make has to go through the planning department, I mean, planning department, uh, redevelopment board, town meeting. Um, so even if we have a consultant who's recommending a choice of action, that doesn't mean that that action sort of automatically takes place, which I sort of sounded what, what uh, Mr. Wagner was suggesting. Um, so that's it. Uh, third thing is we have a great school system. It's um, the elementary schools are actually at their peak as of last year. Um, so we have some space there. Um, and uh, yeah, I just urge you to not sort of make a motion, a move that would undermine the relationship that I think has been carefully developed over the years. Thanks. Thank you, uh, Jennifer. Um, <clears throat> so um, the next speaker is uh, Joseph Solomon. Mr. Solomon. Yep. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. All right. Well, thank you for the opportunity to uh, address you this evening. I shared some general written comments earlier about just the value of planning in the, the face of change, but I wanted to mention just a couple points this evening. Um, one was that my parents purchased their home in Arlington in, in 1980. 
and our family's seen at this point over 40 years of change, right? And from all indicators, the town has, has managed this very effectively, right? Arlington is a strong community and an incredibly attractive place to live. And obviously as a child growing up in town, I wasn't close to the process of how this was managed, but as a parent now going through what my parents before me went through, I am um, very grateful that the plans and actions were, were undertaken as I was growing up. And now looking forward, I, I really can't see how the need to have these plans will decrease, right? I, you know, I'm, I'm just a, a regular Joe. I'm not on any, you know, committees or town meetings, but, you know, I know the, the MBTA community guidelines are coming out and we need planning to figure out how we implement those so that we don't put a lot of um, state funding at risk. I, we, we need to understand as a town how we march along with the state towards 2050 net zero guidelines, right? And all of the other things that are gonna come up over the years. And if we aren't prepared for these changes, the town will fall behind and the progress that we've made will, will be at risk. So my, my concern is that by any um, holding constant or reduction in, in the planning department's funding, uh, it, it puts the ability of Arlington to continue its excellence at risk. Um, so that's all. Thanks for, uh, again for the opportunity to speak. Thank, thank you, Mr. Solomon. So uh, the next speaker is um, Ms. Cahill, Eileen Cahill. Hi, um, thank you. Uh, my name is Eileen Cahill and um, I live in Arlington and I grew up in Arlington. Um, I'm speaking tonight with concern and I wrote to you with um, the housing production plan and um, it's to my knowledge, I don't see any um, force like thought in the infrastructure planning, how that would be affected. So um, I'm a civil engineer and I did, I've done a lot of um, sewer and water design and you know, we don't see it but it's, that's a good thing when we don't, right? When we don't see the wastewater. So my concern is changing the um, zoning of the town without considering how it's impacting our infrastructure, which is so critical to the town, the health of the town. And um, so, you know, I, I wrote in the email and I think the, the board saw it, it's, it has huge financial implications for the town. Um, we, you know, when we, when we design a sewer, we literally count the lots, we look at the zoning, we say, okay, it's R1, say three bedrooms per house. We're gonna estimate 110 gallons per day per bedroom. I mean, per house, uh, yeah, per bedroom. So 330 gallons per day. And that's how we size the sewer. And throughout the town, there are, um, you know, this is this is an old community. So we have old infrastructure. And I know, you know, the town is spending money lining the sewer. And I think that's likely for, I haven't read the reports, but I'm sure it's for like to, to reduce infiltration into the sewer system, which is like water that leaks into the sewer. That's clean water. We don't want that in, in the sewer, you know? Uh, we don't wanna have to treat clean water. So, um, I just am really concerned from a financial aspect for the town. If we go and change um, the residential, all of a sudden we, you know, double the population in an area, you have that much more flow going to say the sewer and not only the pipes that, you know, they can hold a lot depending on the slope or what have you, but then what about the pump stations, you know, and what about those low houses? And right now I have a list of like um, probably 20 locations in town that, you know, have we talked to the Department of Public Works? Because they know the trouble spots. Um, you know, the, the actual people that operate the system, I think we really need to talk to them before we go change the zoning on any, um, you know, anywhere in town. Um, there's just so many questions that I, I really, the report that I, I, I have skimmed, honestly, I haven't dove into it, but there was no tables, um, it was a lot of words. And that really concerns me if we base our, you know, our makeup of the town on that because it is a solid town because we have maintained control. Ms. Cahill, uh, I think your time is up. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your comments.
So um, that brings us to uh, town manager Chapter Lane. And uh, since uh, th there have been a lot of subjects covered here, uh, Adam, that s have financial implications, but they're not necessarily directly associated with the department budget. And um, there also were some emails I know that you were concerned about that um, where the speakers, uh, where, the, where the writers did not choose to speak this evening. But um, do you think seven, uh, three minutes is enough time or do you need more time? I, I uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I can be very brief um, and then answer questions the committee will have if, if that's okay with you. Yes. Great, thank you. So I, I think I just wanna cover a few things, uh, much of which has already been discussed or just highlighted by you, Mr. Chairman. One, the budget that is before uh, the committee is a level staff budget. There aren't increases being proposed in this budget. In fact, if you look at the, the book as proposed to you, it's, it's a total planning increase of 0.62%, right? So it's a nearly level budget. The positions being recommended have been funded for a number of years and they fulfill work that is almost entirely guided by goals that are annually set by the select board and the town manager. Sustainability work, uh, work around environmental planning, work around our natural resources, work around transportation. Um, they really are a powerhouse department that does the work guided by our elected select board. Also, and I think this is what you were just alluding to, Mr. Chairman, um, the studies that have been referenced, primarily the housing production plan, are actually not funded by the taxpayer funded um, operating budget out of this departmental budget. Um, the housing production plan, I believe was fully funded by community development block grants. And in years past, sometimes planning studies have been funded by the operating budget, but in a separate warrant article, not part of this departmental operating budget. So when a separate warrant article is filed, those can certainly be granted added scrutiny, but historically both this finance committee and ultimately town meeting have voted to approve the expenditure of those funds so nothing nefarious or untoward is happening. In fact, we are just carrying out the voted wishes of the popularly elected, elected town meeting of Arlington. Um, so I think that's an important thing to recognize. Additionally, I think it is, you know, I, I don't know that diving too much into the housing production plan is overly productive tonight, but I think it's important to mention that it, uh, as Ms. Seuss mentioned, when nothing in that plan is adopted by the creation of that plan or even the adoption of the plan by the redevelopment board and the select board. Any type of zoning change or significant policy change would have to be proposed to and adopted by town meeting. So I don't say that to back away from the contents of the plan, but to make clear that the creation of the plan in and of itself doesn't adopt policy or effectuate policy. But perhaps more importantly, I think it's important for everybody to know that the creation of the housing production plan can actually greatly benefit the housing future of Arlington by potentially providing us with safe harbor status against 40B. And the prior housing production plan, which expired at the end of last year, right before its expiration, was certified by the state because of the number of units that were approved at 1165R Mass South, the Myrak property development, which means we were granted one year from October of 21 to October of 22 one year 40B safe harbor, harbor status. Meaning that if a developer came in wanting to propose a 40B, apply to the ZBA, if the town was not in favor of it, it could be turned down for that one year period. By creating a new housing production plan since the past one has expired, we once again have that chance to meet certain housing targets and be able to provide the town safe harbor status from 40B. And again, control our destiny for housing within the community. So I think there's actually a very strategic merit to developing and adopting a housing production plan that can benefit town, uh, the town, regardless of your view on housing by providing that safe harbor status and letting us master our own destiny. So I think I'll close with that, um, but I would be happy to answer any questions committee members might have. Thank you, Mr. Chaplain. So, um, Al Tosti. Yes, I just had a question for Mr. Wagner. Um, it, in, if I heard him correctly, most of the issues that we raised uh, dealt with grant money, uh, grant studies, uh, community development block grant. Are you recommending that any specific change 
be made in the planning and community development budget? Mr. Chaucey, thank you for your question. Uh, I am a neophyte in the ways of the Finance Committee's expertise. And so I would actually say what I am hoping the people here today, both in the committee and from the public, can find a way to do is to help the planning department to do its own work with its own staff when it's not extremely technical, because I'm concerned that they are couching political decisions in consultant paid work. I don't know how to ask for that. I do know that if somebody like me were to be in town meeting and ask for it in town meeting, everybody always says, oh my goodness, please, can you get your questions earlier in places like finance committee? So that's why I came to you at finance committee to ask for this direction. Thank you, Mr. Wagner. Thank you. Does that answer your question? Yes. Annie LaCourt. Your so, hands. Yeah, I do. I don't have a question, but I wanna say something. Is this the right time or do you wanna wait until questions? No, that's fine. Um, so- um, we're, I, we're all friends here, Annie. I know. I just wanna be sure I'm doing things in the order you wanna do them, Charlie. <laughs> Um, so based on some of the issues that were raised in the correspondence that we received and based on this, um, in particular, this uh, suggestion that somehow we rein in um, funding for studies that are grant based, um, I provided to all of you and it's in SharePoint, the CDBG draft uh, year 48 proposal and I just want to say a couple of things about how CDBG works since I sat on that committee for seven years when I was on the select board. So CDBG is direct federal funding. It comes to the town manager and the select board. There is a subcommittee of the select board uh, in combination with the CB CDBG administrator and I believe the chair of planning and perhaps a fifth person that uh, reviews that process and um, sees those proposals and is uh, uh, tasked with um, determining what to fund. The CDBG grant comes in four categories. We have restrictions on how much of the total grant we can spend in each of those categories. I believe at least two of those categories are restricted. Adam could probably fill us in about whether the other two are restricted or we can put as much money into them as we want. And those include housing, public facilities, a, a sort of a, a public benefits section and planning. And if you look at the material I sent and you look at page two, which lays out the requests and the plans, you will discover something that those of us on the CDBG committee struggled with every year, which is that the section where people are asking for support for social services, things like hockey scholarships, after school programs, so on and so forth, is always oversubscribed. We can't spend as much money as we are requested to spend. And there is a section of that budget that we are allowed to spend on planning. And that supports certain standard activities of the planning department, not least of which is the CDBG administrator. And as you will see, this year's planning request is less than, although only slightly less than, the amount of money we are allowed to spend on planning in the CDBG budget. And then there are requests in the other two categories. I'd like to point out that I believe, and again, Adam could confirm this or deny it, that if we do not spend the money and we only spend the money based on people requesting it, if we don't spend it, we have to send it back to the federal government. So given that we can't fund more than a certain amount of the one oversubscribed budget, and we only have requests for a certain amount in the other categories, otherwise you would see those categories oversubscribed as well. If we don't spend the money that we're spending on planners planning and this planning study, we're sending it back to the federal government. That's all. Thank you, Annie. Uh, Shailene, your hand is up. Yes, hi, thanks, Charlie. Um, as a member of the Finance Committee for two years, I'm listening to all of this, and thank you to the speakers who've come tonight. I'm trying to hear the the implications for finance, like what, what are we hearing? I, I, I'm trying to avoid listening to policy decisions because that's not what the finance committee does. The finance committee is supposed to pay close attention to anything that's proposed to us or any budget we approve. Um, does it have any long-term effects down the road, for example, 
on like budget increases. And the one thing I heard, and I'm, I'm actually, this is more of a comment. I'm asking my fellow committee members to maybe comment. The one thing that I heard was from Ms. Cahill about um, infrastructure, particularly sewage in that case. But um, if we're being asked to fund a level budget, that generally seems like the right thing to do, right? So I'm just talking out loud so that my fellow committee members can, can give me more information in case I'm missing something. But there is a concern based on Ms. Cahill's comments in particular, that we may need to put forth a finance committee memo or something that says, hey, you know, these uh, plans could affect infrastructure budget, particularly in sewage. That's, that's my comment. Thank you, Shailene. Anybody have uh, any comments for um, Shailene? Any committee members have anything they so, want? To I have a comment along those lines, Charlie. Um, so go ahead, Danny, briefly. Briefly, the housing production plan is a policy document that has been endorsed by the ARB and is before the select board, but has not yet been adopted by them. It suggests strategies, none of which need to be implemented, but all of which become tools in the toolbox to reach a housing production goal. It is a long-term plan. We are not going to double the population of Arlington or the number of units in Arlington tomorrow or in five years or probably in 10 years. So I think that the idea that somehow we are suddenly going to have overrun infrastructure or we are going to have huge um, uh, investments we need to make in infrastructure based on an increase in population is probably uh, a, assuming short-term uh, things are gonna happen that are actually long-term things. I'd also like to point out that we have 43,000 people living in Arlington and at its peak population, Arlington had a population of 53,000 people. So it would seem to me that since our infrastructure was able to handle 53,000 people in like 1975, that it's probably capable of handling 53,000 people in 2025. Thank you, Annie. Uh, Al Jones. Um, I just sort of uh, want to echo Shailene and, and thank Ms. Cahill for offering her uh, expertise and bringing up the concerns. And although the Finance Committee is probably not the right venue for it, I, I do encourage you to, to ask these same questions in front of town meeting or any board that's considering adoption of the plan, uh, just to make sure that infrastructure capacity is addressed as a concern. Because I, 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 I think you're absolutely right. Um, it's probably the wrong venue, but thank you for bringing it up. and. and uh, Continue to do that. Thank you. Uh, David McKenna. Uh, <clears throat> just to piggyback on what uh, Annie LaCourt said, um, a number of years ago, we had uh, uh, 10,000, approximately 10,000 school aged children in the town of Allington. Not all of them went to Allington public schools. We had three parochial schools, first grade to eighth grade, that, that helped us. Immaculate Conception, St. James, and St. Agnes. In addition, we had uh, Arlington Catholic High School, and we also had Mary Cliff Academy that took in, in those days, uh, girls only. That was out on Ridge Street in Winchester. So that, over time, we ended up, the, only one uh, parochial school is left, uh, elementary school, and the junior, one junior high or middle, middle school is left, and um, we closed five elementary schools in that, in that time frame. So we went down to approximately, now we have as Annie says, we have about 42 to 43,000 people. And one of, the one of the things you have to worry on population, under civil service law, if you have 50,000 people or more in your town, you do not have to wait three years to take a promotional exam. If you have under 50,000, you have to wait three years. So if you went on the police or the fire and, and a promotional exam come up, if you had um, 50,000 or more people, you could take the exam any, whenever it was available. Under 50,000, you have to wait three years up from the Thank time. Thank you, David. You Thank you. Okay. Uh, Christine Deschler. Thank you, Charlie. As far as I'm concerned, the only thing in front of the Finance Committee right now tonight is the Planning and Community Development budget. I haven't heard anything relating to the budget. Now the housing plan may come before town meeting, in which case town meeting may look to the finance committee for its opinion on that. But 
that's not before us. That could be another hearing. Um, but in terms of the budget itself, um, the, I haven't really heard anything to make me um, question anything other than something I've already noticed in the budget. And I'm hoping that somebody can answer this question, whether it's the Finance Committee Working Group, whether it's Adam. Um, and that is, why is the salary line going up 10%? Adam? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So the, the primary driver of that, so there, there are step increases um, for, for staff members, but the primary reason that it's going up by such a large amount is that this is the first year that we have in this budget book reported the CDBG administrator's position. So the CDBG administrator's position is reported up above in the planning salaries but then is entirely offset in the offsets. So there's really no increase in spending. The CDB administrator position has existed since we've received CDBG. So 35, 30, almost 40 years. Um, it's really, it's, it's accounting and not actually any budgetary increase. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Christine. Dean, did you have your hand up before? I did, but then Shailene and Christine said everything I was going to say. Okay, good. And then once Christine said it, I stopped. I put it down. Okay, uh, John Ellis. Uh, thank, thanks. Um, I, I want to ask a planning-related uh, question because the um, economic development position is in the planning budget and the. Town managers here to speak to it. Um, Arlington gets about four or five percent of its total revenue from commercial uh, tax uh, expenses. The twelve towns that we compare ourselves to, the average is about fifteen percent. Um, so, given the low commercial tax base that we have, um, and something that people have alluded to about increasing the housing stock as part of these housing plans. Um, does the town manager have some kind of um, uh, estimate for as time goes on, um, how much of Arlington's town budget um, might be commercial revenue? Is there any chance to increase that percentage or should we expect as the housing stock increases to have an ever lower percentage of our revenue coming from commercial. Mr. Chaplain, would you like to answer that? Yeah, I will, I will do my best. So I think it, it is a hard question to answer with certainty because of the built out nature of the community. I think if you look at changes that have been made in zoning over the better part of the last decade, We've almost entirely been focused on the commercial corridor along Mass Ave and Broadway. So development along the commercial corridor, um, depending on what it is, mixed use would likely both enhance the commercial aspect as well as the housing aspect of it. It's hard to know um, exactly, you know, just, just on the, off the cuff, it's hard to know exactly how that would oh, The rice is really good. Did you put something on it? No. Uh... Somebody better shut their... Uh... Microphone off. This is good. Sorry. Um, so I think you know the 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 what the places where a significant change could go one way or the other would be the larger industrial areas. So if you think of Arlington Coal and Lumber, if you think of what is Gold's Gym now, True Fitness, if you think about the area behind the Myrac property, some of which now is being converted to housing, those are the areas that could either be ripe for significant commercial development or potentially in the future, more housing development. And that I think that could be where you start to see that 95% versus 5% start to shift. But I think ultimately what whatever we see over time is gonna be very incremental because there aren't large tracts of land that are gonna be re redeveloped one way or the other. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Joe, um, I'm sorry, Ms. Preston, but I you haven't um, requested a presentation in advance. Um, is there anyone else on the committee that has any comments?
No hands. Okay. So let me, um, I'd like to make a couple of comments. Uh, first of all, um, as uh, Christine Deschler pointed out, uh, I don't think we've heard any recommendations by any of the speakers for specific changes in the uh, um, planning and community development budget. Uh, secondly, there's been a lot of discussion about the housing development plan, which um, I think uh, the town manager clarified that this is a, um, let me say, a, a, a sort of a smorgasbord of um, options for development and not something that the town has specifically adopted in any single case. Although, as one of the speakers, uh, Ms. Cahill, pointed out, many of the uh, alternatives have uh, implications that could have negative consequences for the town if they weren't offset by um, other considerations. And I think the third thing that um, was uh, clarified uh, by uh, Mr. Chaptelaine, and I believe was mentioned earlier by uh, Dave McKenna and uh, Sophie Magli Magliozo, is that um, the, uh, the budget is more transparent than it's been in the past because uh, all of the people working in the budget are shown in the personnel uh, line item costs. And if they're funded by outside resources, those offsets are shown at the bottom of the personnel uh, table. So um, those are just my observations about the conversation this evening. Alan Tosti, you have your hand up. I just wanted to follow up John Ellis's, uh, you know, comment about the commercial industrial land. The, the, the thing, I, I think the town's policy is going in the wrong direction, Mr. Manager. Uh, we need more commercial industrial land. Uh, and, and I think the policy has been strictly towards housing. The MIRAC project is actually removing an office building and putting housing in it. It's going in the wrong direction. We're not gonna have any more businesses in commercial area unless the town leadership uh, pushes for it and encourages it in every way we can. So that's just my two cents. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. So um, I think we've, we've uh, exhausted this topic um, enough, if I may. So uh, I'd like to turn the subject back to uh, David McKenna and uh, Sophie uh, Migliazzo, Migliazzo to um, uh, make whatever recommendations that they wish to make. Alan, David, your your audio is gone. Oh. How about now, Kelly? Now we can hear you, yes. Okay. Um, I, I'd like to have Sophie make the motion where Sophie presented the budget and I will second the motion, whatever so Sophie desires. Sophie? No problem. And Charlie, um, I think Alan has a question. His hand's up. Do you want to do that first? Oh, Alan Jones, yes. I'm sorry. Not a question, but just... Uh, uh, this doesn't show up in the manager's budget book, but in the finance committee record, there's a history of the offsets that are broken down. And there used to be a CDBG affordable housing offset around $12,000, uh, which looks like it's disappeared in the manager's book. I clarified this with uh, Jolie today. It's actually been rolled into the CDBG planning offset. Uh, so I didn't want town meeting members to think that the housing, the affordable housing offset has gone away. So that will be uh, brought out in, in the finance committee report to point out hasn't been brought away. It's just moved to a different line item. We should make that a footnote. Yeah, it'll be a footnote. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead, Sophie. Thank you. I'd like to move um, that we recommend as printed the planning and community development budget for a taxation total of six hundred thirty one thousand one hundred eighty eight dollars. Second. Is there any further um, discussion on this budget? Okay, hearing none. Um, we'll go to a vote. Uh, Grant Gibeon? Yes. Shane Blundell? 
Yes. John Ellis. Yes. Brian Beck. Yes. Sophie Migliazzo. Yes. Jonathan Wallach. Yes. Shailene Pokris. Yes. Daryl Harmer. Yes. Andy LaCourt. Yes. Alan Jones. Yes. Thank you. Um, George Koser. Yes. Bill Keller. Yes. Al Tassi. Yes. Wanda Nascimento. Yes. Christine Deschler. Yes. Dean Carmen. Yes. And David McKenna. Yes. Thank you. The uh, budget is passed uh, as proposed uh, unanimously. I'd like to thank all the visitors tonight who took the time to come and speak to us. We appreciate your comments and your viewpoints. Um, and uh, we appreciate the uh, support and interest of the town manager and deputy town manager as well. Thank you very much. So um, the next subject is the um, the warrant review, which I think, I, I, as I said, I think we'll postpone that because um, it's just um, not, it will, it will be in better shape if we wait until we get the improved warrant, which I hope will be by Wednesday night. Um, so the first budget would be information technology. Altasi, who's got that budget? Uh, Bill and I have it. Uh, okay. So uh, I sent out an email, or Tara sent out an email that I forwarded to her, uh, forwarding an email from the IT director uh, on the uh, changes that um, I guess we convinced her to make. Uh, so I'd like to go through the budget on page 34 and 35. Al, Al, Alan Jones, can you display that, please? I need to have screen sharing uh, enabled. Okay, you can try again. Sorry about that. Okay, no problem. Al Tassi, you're on. Okay. Oh, um, Keller, who's ever doing it? Yep. Yeah. Uh, we're recommending no changes in the uh, salaries. So that will stay the same as 701019. However, the IT expenses are going to change. So let me go through and give you the changes that we're recommending and then uh, go back and explain those changes. So the first change is under the 5219 consulting. And the budget there is $32,000. We're recommending a change to 37,000. Now the consulting will be broken down. Uh, support for water and sewer data archive uh, for approximately 12 months. That's about 5,000. That was basically cash transferred from another wine item. Office 365 support for mailbox and calendar conversion and migration, five to 10,000. Network consulting, cybersecurity enhancements 10 to 12, and wiring of town offices, no other's network of about $10,000. The next change is Unix hardware support, $2,300, that becomes zero. 
because it's no longer needed. Information maintenance of $7,000 becomes zero because it's no longer needed. Now, part of that money in effect sort of gets transferred over to consulting, which is the reason for the increase uh, to help for at least a year uh, for some archiving and being able to retrieve information where it might be necessary. The next line item that's changed is computer paper of $2,300 and that becomes zero because she says it's no longer needed. And the final change is courier services 5350 becomes zero uh, because she said that's no longer needed. So those combined changes lead to a drop of $7,000 and I could give you the exact numbers later. Um, I believe it was Alan Jones asked where the uh, Microsoft 365 is, that maintenance, that is under software maintenance item 5305. And you could see where it went from the approximately 48,000 in 21 to 109,022, that's where the Microsoft 365 expenses are. And uh, she recommended an increase of 2000 uh, because of uh, some license increases that she is expecting. Uh, let's see. The big increase in infra uh, mix, uh, Network maintenance, no. Yes, network maintenance uh, is because the need to increase the capacity of the network uh, because of the transferring of items to the cloud. Uh, she's thinking that we might have some savings. I pushed her on this from that, but she'd like to see uh, if there are any savings next year, uh, in which case there can be some reductions. But basically she said they need, they're, they're expanding the network more into the uh, town hall. Uh, they're looking for changes to go to hybrid uh, for a lot of the town systems, especially committee meetings and such, going to the cloud, they need to make the pipe bigger. And that's primarily the, uh, the change there. Uh, I think those were the major questions and the major changes. Um, water and sewer going to Munis from the old system is going to be live in March. Um, they've made all the changes, they've tested it, uh, and March is the date. Uh, so that's all I have to say now. Uh, I could give you the number, the changes in the numbers now, or wait till the end when we're going to take a vote. Uh, up to you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we can wait till we're at the end. Okay. Any questions for Al and Bill? Uh, can you, uh, somebody, uh, Annie, if you've got your eye on the. Alan Jones has his hand up. Alan Jones. Yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm glad to hear where the, the 365 funding is. And in terms of the consulting budget, I'm actually surprised that uh, it isn't more for, for the email conversion because that, that's a huge job. Uh, but my question is, was there much discussion about um, security and the increased need for security uh, against all, all the threats that are coming in? Uh, is there any, any, you know, I didn't hear anything specific about uh, security uh, increases. Well, one of the items under consulting in the, in the email we sent out was network consulting. And she just said cybersecurity enhancements. She mentioned MFA. I'm not quite sure what that means, um, but 10 to 12. Multi factor authentication. Yeah. So uh, about a third of the consulting 
is for security enhancements. We, we didn't discuss Ukraine. Our discussion was over a week ago. Yeah, okay. I just read about Tewksbury, um, you know, with a fishing thing costs about $100,000. I think it was Tewksbury. So I just want to make sure we're paying sufficient attention to that. Thank you. So that was uh, one of the specific things that she mentioned was a system called Barracuda. And uh, that's uh, set up to catch um, any information that uh, would maybe go elsewhere and scans the information on the computer. So uh, it also works so that an employee could work from home and also have the same uh, anti-phishing capability from their home computer that they would if they were in the office uh, per se. Yeah, that's a, that's a firewall. Um, yeah. That has that isn't isn't and quite so. What I'd really like to see is a lot of employee training because it's usually phishing attacks and things where it, it's the human element that, that is the vulnerability more than the hardware in the network. Thank you, Annie Lacourt. Yeah, just apropos of the same subject of security, um, I, I did have a discussion over the summer with Sandy Pooler. Uh, regarding this and regarding the fact that, um, you know, we're seeing these kinds of increased and more sophisticated threats and that they're often uh, attacking vulnerable uh, institutions, municipalities being one of those vulnerable institutions because they tend to be technologically behind. And um, Sandy is, says the town is very much in, aware of these problems, has experienced some of them, keeping an eye on security and is working with other municipalities for everybody to stay abreast of you know, what needs to be going on. So I think that's part of why they have a security consultant coming in. And um, I don't think anybody's asleep at the switch about this. Um, and then I would just like to say one more thing about informix maintenance and so on and so forth going away. And that is hallelujah. I'll second that. Thank you, Annie. Um, let's see, any other questions here? Oh, Shane. Thank you, Charlie. I have a strange question but we don't need computer paper anymore i guess I, how does that work i i think what she's doing in some of these cases is they're they're trying to consolidate some of these accounts and i think that you know specifically um you're seeing computer supplies that's still sixty five hundred dollars so i assume what she's doing there is uh trying to print out less paper and uh, she still got $6,500 there in computer supplies and uh, repairs there. So I, I think there's, there's probably some paper built in there. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, okay, I don't see any. I have a couple of questions, Al. Uh, where where are they located and how are they how well are they operating now? I mean, they were up in the basement of the school. I know they've moved. I think they're in some location in DPW. Is that are they functional there? Uh, to tell you the truth, I don't think the discussion ever came up. Bill, do you remember? Um, no, there there's some talk about um, moving things to the cloud versus having a, a server on Grove Street, but. I don't think that directly answers the question. And did anything come up about, uh, you know, once the DPW building is finished or, or, or as it gets further finished then the facilities that are supposed to be available for data processing are um, available, is, is, that a, is, that a, is that move a capitalized cost or is it uh, oper operating cost? Okay, I'll be... I'll be happy to see if I can get that information where they're located now and uh, the move, where they're going to move and how will that be paid for? Yeah. And then the third question I have is, um, is re I think is maybe related to the Informix change that you, you uh, presented and Annie also mentioned, but is the um, water and sewer um, transition, is that the last application that's going to go up on Munis? In other words, we've been waiting for that for years. We, we spent probably close to a million dollars on the Munis software, 
in for a long time, we haven't had all the applications up. I'm just wondering if that's the last one. It's my understanding it is <clears throat> in both the controller, uh, well, it can, probably the controller mentioned a couple of times that's, that's been uh, a, a real problem to do, um, but they got it done. Uh, and uh, hopefully uh, everything will work out fine. But I believe that's the last application. Everything's on Munis now. And uh, both the controller and the uh, IT, you know, have Munis training in there, um, probably to bring everything up to date. Bill, do you have anything to add on that? Um, no, I don't. Thank you. Thank you, Al. So, Al, uh, maybe you can now give us the numbers. Okay. So, basically, you're subtracting uh, 7,000 down. So, expenses is now 639213. Total, 1,340,000. Two one three. So and Al has moved the total expenses of um, one million three hundred forty thousand. I'm sorry, total a budget of one million three hundred forty thousand two hundred thirteen dollars in the IT budget. Okay, minus the offsets. Oh, minus yeah. For a bottom line of one million one zero zero. Six zero four. Is that a motion? Al? Yes. Is second. there a second? Second. Second. So it's moved and seconded. Uh, any further discussion on the IT budget? Uh, hearing no request for further discussion, um, we'll move to a vote. Grant Gibbion? Yes. Shane Blundell? Yes. John Ellis? Yes. Uh, Brian Beck? Yes. Uh, Sophie Migliazzo? Yes. Jonathan Wallach? Yes. Uh, Shailene Pokris? Yes. Daryl Harmer? Yes. Andy LaCourt? Yes. Alan Jones? Yes. Uh, George Koser? Yes. Bill Keller? Yes. Altasti? Yes. Wanda Nascimento? Yes. Christine Deschler? Yes. Dean Clerman? Yes. And David McKenna? Yes. So the uh, IT budget is passed unanimously. Thank you very much. Um, the next budget, uh, treasurer collector is also Al, you and uh, Bill and, and uh, Brian. We, uh, that's not, gonna have to wait. We have not met with the treasurer collector on her budget of the parking and the postage budget. Uh, we will try to get that done as soon as possible. Uh, the uh, insurance budget, of course, is the one that we have to wait until uh, mid-March uh, after the rates come in. Okay, so let's see if I have this right. Um, so you, you, you don't have treasure collector postage and parking, right? That's like correct. We knew about the, um, about the um, insurance. So- uh, Yeah, if I may, I think, um, I think Brian mentioned that he's uh, in the process of trying to get an appointment with the treasurer someday uh, next week. I, I so sent I, I sent her an email her. today because I just I just got back from my uh, vacation. Okay, so um, can you get together with? So we, we won't have this budget on um, on Wednesday, is what you're saying, because you haven't met with them yet, right? Correct. Right. I'm I hope to get a meeting with her this week. Okay, can you uh, get together with uh, Tara, uh, perhaps by the next? Um, you know, by, by Wednesday night and let us know when you think you'll have that budget available. I'll let, I'll let you know. Okay, thank you. 
Um, any other budgets that anybody has ready for this evening? Okay, so let's um, let's take a stab at at the um, the warrant review since we have the time. Um, so, unfortunately, uh, Tara, can you put up the um, the warrant? Um, yes, one sec. Can everyone see that? Yes, any chance you can make it, there we go. And now make it a full page width, perhaps? Yeah, that looks good, okay. All right. Um, so I don't know if you can do this on, um, on the screen. Is this a Word document, uh, Andy, uh, Tara? Yeah, uh, no, I think this is a PDF, but I think, you know what, let me, um, let me download it and I can edit it or make comments on it um, a different way. So just, uh, just give me a sec here. Okay. Okay. So, um, any chance? You, there we go. Perfect. So let's. Uh, what I what I would ask is that um, we just add a number. You know, we'll call it Tara's. Call the T T one T two T three or whatever um, next to when we get to any articles that are not numbered. Okay. So going to the first next page. Next page. Okay, state of the um, so our okay state of the town address is not our 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 scene there. Um, reports of committees, measure wooden bark, election assistant town manager. So please go to the next page. Okay, Article Six bylaw amendment updating the Human Rights Commission bylaw. Um, that doesn't look like a finance committee article. Does anybody think we should be reviewing that? I don't hear anything. Okay, bylaw amendment and young adult advisory board. So why don't you call that uh, article T7, Tara? Okay, um, so anyone think we should be reviewing that? Okay, um, the next article is the bylaw amendment for the civilian police advisory commission. Um, I don't think that's a financial article. Anybody have any comments on that? Since I'm looking at the screen here um, and I can't see necessarily see all of you at the same time, just speak up if you have a comment, okay? So that's, uh, this should be T8. The next article is a uh, bylaw amendment achieving net zero greenhouse gas emissions from town facilities consistent with the Charlie? town. Yes. Sorry, just cause you said didn't. Oh, Shailene, me. go ahead. I did, I did have a quick question on the police advisory commission. Yes. Um, I think we heard a couple meetings ago that there are some statewide initiatives in a similar vein. Um, and just, I had a similar thought about that to when I just read this warrant article is whether we could as a committee look into whether there are any financial implications for that advisory commission. Maybe someone here knows that there aren't gonna be any financial implications on article, uh, I think that says T8, but I'm just interested because uh, we're gonna keep, we're gonna keep hearing about police. Mm -hmm. It's gonna keep coming up. So I think- Daryl, do you have any uh, inputs on that or observations? Daryl? 
Sorry, I'm trying to get off mute. Sorry, could you could you repeat the question, please? Uh, yes. The, the, uh, so, why don't you repeat your question, Shailene? Uh, yeah, Daryl, I'm just wondering if you it, if you could comment on um, whether you see any implicate financial implications in the future. Um, like, I know setting up a an advisory committee generally doesn't cost us any money because people are volunteering their time, but um, I don't know. It's this is how things get started. Do you know what I mean? Like, we we're going to keep hearing about the police budget. There are people who want to remove finances from the police budget or put them in other places and. I'm just wondering if there's something to unpack here with this article. And you may not have the answer, but I, I didn't want to just let it go with, with this committee scrolling past it and saying, yeah, yeah, that one's fine. I, I think there's a lot there. So if you have any comments. Um, I, I don't, we, we didn't, hadn't seen this article um, when we um, had our budget meeting with police. I, I can ask the chief um, if she anticipates any budgetary implications. So there is, there is um, a uh, final vote on this that I believe that's been uh, put forth by the, like there was a recommended, um, uh, the, 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 the people advocating for this have put forth a recommendation and the select board has modified it and we'll be bringing it to town meeting. So I think we could get a copy of that um, and you know exactly how is this going to be constituted and what's its what are its duties going to be? I know that it is not going to have investigative um, or subpoena power. So that certainly means it won't be spending a lot of money on that. Um, it's supposed to be advisory. Um, so but there's no in this article, there is no request for an appropriation or spending. There's no dollar number. I, I don't believe so. I, I think it's just what is the advisory committee going to assist yeah. consist of and what are its duties, but um, that doesn't mean Shailene's wrong. It just means that we may not know this year. Right. So um, who's the chair of the uh, police civilian advisory board study committee? Does anyone know? I don't know for sure. I know Sanjay Newton's on it, but I don't know who's chairing it. Okay. So Daryl, um, perhaps you could check with the chief and talk to somebody on the committee and see if we can address Shailene's question to some degree. Charlie, I have a question too. Yes, Christine. Um, I'm just wondering whether this may this may be redundant to the state police advisory. Commission. I, I was actually just thinking that too. That um, in in which case I assume the the state police reform act would supersede this or at least take precedence over it. Okay, so, but, but let me let me just, uh, that, I, I appreciate your comment, um, Christine, but um, I, I think that would still be, determining that would be the job of the Board of Selectmen. So um, perhaps the, the step that you can take, Daryl, is just, to answer, to get some sort of an indication for Shailene as to whether or not there are financial implications to the, or, or spending plans for this commission, okay? okay. That's the basic issue. Yep, thank you. Okay, um, article T9, bylaw amendment achieving net zero greenhouse gas emissions from town facilities consistent with the bylaw. So, anyone have any comments on that? It's not an appropriation article. Charlie, uh, would that affect you in the capital planning in the sense that- well, I, I think you're right. I, I was about to say that, Brian. So, um, Jonathan. Could you, before we decide whether or not to have a hearing on that, could you um, dig into it a little bit and find out if what what impact this is going to have on a on the cost of our buildings? Um, I can certainly do that. Yes. And, will, and there's two there's two categories here. One is um, new buildings, 
and the other is existing buildings. You know, what do we have to go back and renovate buildings or, or whatever? Okay. Okay, I, I can uh, check. Um, I'll first touch base with Sandy, see what he knows about this. Okay, great. <clears throat> so, Tara, why don't you make a note on T9 that um, Jonathan's going to look in, into that? Thank you, Jonathan. Um, bylaw amendment tree preservation and protection. Okay. Um, John Ellis, do you know anything about this? John on, still on? He's still there, but he's, he may have stepped away. <clears throat> um, So, um, you want me to highlight it to come back to it? Yeah, I, oh, I think we should. Yeah. Okay. We can review that when John is back. John Ellis knows a lot about trees. So, <clears throat> but it looks to me like um, there's some, I don't know where we get the people who do the certification, the landscape professional, et cetera. That's going to require spending of some sort. It may already be in the budget or it may not. Uh, bylaw amendment domestic partnerships. I think this, I'm a little worried by the bottom line. Specify employment benefits relationship to domestic partnerships. Uh, that, that could really open up a can of worms. Uh, as you know, health insurance is extremely expensive for the town. Um, I think the only thing holding it back now is the uh, GIC uh, policy that you have to be married to get benefits. Um, but I'd be a little concerned about that. So um, Al, you're recommending that we have a hearing on this? I think so. What is it? I don't know if anybody else feels that way, but you know. Okay. So Tara, benefits uh, is a red flag. Add add the add the uh, that we have to means we have to cop contact the uh, is it is it the yeah the LGBTQIA plus Rainbow Commission. Right. So yeah, I probably can't. Why have this money? It's, this is Shailene. And I just wanted to second what I was saying. I think we okay. should have on it. Thank you. Okay, the next article is um, bylaw amendment, single use plastic water bottle regulation. I, I don't see an appropriation there. It may, it may raise the cost of plastic bottles or consumer goods to the citizens, but it's not, doesn't look to me like it's an appropriation. Charlie, what about where it says provide for enforcement? Uh-huh. Okay, um, I think you're right. We, we, we'd have a, Maybe we'd have a, a like parking meter officers. We'd have plastic bottle officers or something. I don't know. Um, I, don't, I don't think this would be a big deal. You only have, let's say you have 20 places, 30 places in the town that sell water. You know, the, I think the regular health department could probably take care of this. They're inspecting those places anyways. Shailene, do you still have your hand raised? Sorry, that was leftover. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Let's um, let's just let's just leave that for the time being. The use of face surveillance. I don't. I don't think this is a uh, finance committee article. 
Um, establish a committee on insurance costs and issues. Um, this looks like a study committee. Does anyone have any reason that they, we think we should review this? I don't think so. No. They come back with recommendations that whatever the recommendations are for future action might be a finance committee article. Um, noise abatement. Can you move that up a little bit, Tara? Thank you. Um, I have no idea what this means. The uh, mention of the Arlington DPW, uh, you know, might want to ask if it has the possibility of increasing costs for the DPW, if, yeah. if that would pass. Okay, so um, Christine, who, who do you have DPW? Who's got Chris, uh, DPW? I have DPW. I can I can ask about this. Question. Did you find out from from uh, Mike Rademacher if this is yeah. going to have a cost, and then we'll figure out what to do about it. Same thing with Article T sixteen here. So uh, T17, bylaw amendment conversion of gas station dispensing pumps to self-service operation. Um, that looks to me like a cost to the gas station owners, but not to um, the town directly. So I think we can skip that one. Um, bylaw amendment of certain toxic rodenticides on public property with reporting requirements and public education. <clears throat> okay. Um, Annie and Wanda, this looks to me like it's gonna have a cost. Mm. So- um, Yeah, let's- let, let us, when we bring Christine in, let's add, I'll add that to our set of questions for her. Okay. And see what I can find out in advance. That'd be great. I want to note that I'm going to do that and then we'll figure out, we'll, we'll just make sure she can answer the question. I mean, usually what happens, these things get passed, you know, then the next um, cycle is an inspector required or something or equipment, I don't know. So, um, Sophie, do you have anything to do with the next article? Um, uh, the next article, nope, I don't have anything to do with that one. It's not spelled the same way, but I do have a quick question. Just, I'm so just I know it's not spelled the same way. I was just- He's teasing. Lightning I know. <laughs> Charlie, just a quick question, maybe also for the health, um, Board of Health is on the noise abatement for um, leaf blowers, because when I looked into this a while ago, it requires them to come out and measure the noise, which would maybe cost more. Uh, yeah. Um, well, Christine can investigate that. I think that's a good comment. I've also in the past seen uh, conversations uh, at town meeting where the ability to accurately measure the noise level is not that Right. In other words, you know, being a, you have to you have to be a sound engineer. You have to have uh, you have to have very defined conditions, like how many feet away, and if the wind is blowing, it's a different sound, etc. So th there are a lot of vagaries associated with that. But I'm sure Christine will get to the bottom of it. Okay, I I think the street name. 
uh, is not necessarily our concern here. Um, vote code enforcement. Definitely, that definitely has financial implications. Okay, um, why don't we make that a, get a hearing on that one, uh, Tara. The next one, uh, T21, see if the town will extend the time frame of youth and young adult advisory board. I don't think that that's just a um, keep the keep the committee in operation. That's not a problem. Vote the establishment of the town committee to examine budgetary impact of overnight parking. Boy, well, things must be slow at the school committee. A lot of a lot of uh, Paul Slickman articles here. Um, I don't think there's an appropriation here. I don't think it's going to have. I don't think we need to worry about T22, T23. Um, I, I don't think there's any financial implication there. If, if no one else does. Next item, article, um, home rule legislation financial estimates and budget documents. Oh, uh, we need to not only have a hearing on this, but to vigorously oppose it. Um, right now, the manager has to, by bylaw, uh, has to report to the selectmen and the finance committee by January 15th uh, and have the budget documents to us. They tried to do this about two years ago or three years ago, I think. And this proposes to bump that into early February after the, the governor gives his uh, recommendations on local aid. While that might make it a little more crystal clear on the local aid issue, it, it basically means we don't get the budgets until the second week in February. We haven't gotten the warrant a month after it closed. And yet, now we're supposed to get everything done in March. I, I this would be a big problem unless they want to move town meeting back a month. So um, we'll do a hearing. We'll get the select board in. Um, home rule legislation, early voting for town elections. I would think that has a cost, right? I mean, from our discussion with the town clerk, everything early voting. Absolutely. That's, I think we have a hearing on that. So let's. Um... Would this be a hearing with the select board or? No, the elect, elect, election modernization study committee. Um, zoning bylaw amendments enhance basic business. I don't think there's any financial, um, anything financial that we need to review there. Um, but amendment street trees. Uh, Charlie, just a quick question on that one that you said to go one back, when it says um, to limit the amount of ground floor retail space occupied by certain businesses, does that mean less commercial space and less commercial revenue? I'm confused. No, I think what they're after, Sophie, is they're after um, uh, not becoming a city where all of our streets are lined with offices and lobbies and banks. Lobbies particularly tend to be the commercial space in apartment buildings in our mixed use. So they're trying to encourage more of a mix of businesses. So more commercial, not less. Thanks. Zoning bylaw amendment street trees. I just want to 
note that John Ellis is back and there's also a comment about tree bylaws in the chat if anyone wants to look at that. So um, John Ellis, you there? Yes. We had an earlier uh, zoning article here. Um, Sorry, I missed it. Yeah, not zoning, but a tree article. Mm -hmm. I, I know you're our expert on the trees. So the question is on this article T10, um, is there gonna be a, an incremental cost to the town by adopting this regulation? No, no, the, the, the tree plans are already part of the scope of work of the tree warden. He, he has a full-time position. So if you're changing the number of trees that are in a tree plan, I can't imagine that that would add any more work for him. What about the requirement of a certification by a landscape professional? That would be a builder cost. Okay, good. And let's go back to the next tree uh, article that we were just looking at. Um, Don't need to pay for those trees. The previous one was on a private plan. Right, this one to require a street tree every 25 feet. Wouldn't that be a town cost? Yeah, I think um, I think we should find that out. Um, I don't understand this one very much. We have a tree management plan that this is says a, what our goals are for tree planning. So, so uh, why don't you write to uh, Jenny Rate, um, and, and maybe she can actually, uh, Sophie. Your that's your. Community uh, planning, the uh, community planning, and uh, what is it? planning and community development manager is also the ex officio person on the zoning or the redevelopment board. So maybe Sophie, you could check this out and see if we need to have a hearing with her. In other words, if the um, if it's a if, if the town is playing for these paying for these trees, uh, we should have a hearing and find out how much the cost is going to be. Okay. If you look at the map, I think that's a lot of trees. I know. That's what I'm asking. So Sophie, if, you know, we, we probably have to have a hearing, but you could at least find out if, if she turns around and says, this is always, this is a, uh, a burden of private developers or something like that, then we probably this don't. This looks to me it. like a developer cost. Well, it doesn't it, say this that. would be tens of thousands of trees if the town was planning it. Then, I, yeah, I well, let's find out. But board rest. yeah, I think it's a good question. I'm interested. Yeah, um, zoning bylaw amendments, solar energy systems. I don't think that's a financial committee article. Zoning by, uh, bylaw administrative. Amendments. Um, I don't think that's finance committee article. Uh, the next one is um, article T30. No, article 331, no, T32, no, T33, no, T34, no, T35, no, T36, no, T37,
Um, let me, let's go back to T36. Iowa family construction allowed by right in R0 and R1 residential zones. Um, Is that going to have any effect on the tax? Oh, it, no, we have Andy or the court here. You can hold the hearing anytime, Charlie. I'm here every night. Okay. You can present it, but you can't vote. That's okay. All right. Do you so want to be hearing on this? <laughs> Is that going to, uh, let's not have the hearing tonight. Let's just make the note that it's Andy or the court. I, I don't believe it will have a negative financial impact, but if you want to discuss it, I, I'm happy to be grilled. Should I put in that we need a hearing, Charlie? What is, uh, is there any opinion on this? It's a, it's a straight zoning question. Let's leave it be. Um, yeah. Zoning bylaw amendment release increased floor area ratio for mixed use structures. I don't think that's a zoning. That's a no. Um, zoning map amendment and Expand business districts, that's a no. Uh, zoning bylaw apartment parking minimums, I would say that's a no. Uh, open space uses. I would say no. Bylaw amendment, map amendment requirements. I would say no. Um, Zoning bylaw amendment appeals. No. Oh, that's a Sophie Migliazzo request. Let's get that one out. No, I'm just kidding. Just... Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. Um, let's see. Provide for the right of appeal for any person requested. Casey alleged violation has not been abated or to require civil proceedings to enforce the bylaws to be initiated or take any action related there too. I think, I think that's, his, I don't think that has a financial implication. Local option taxes. The city of the town will vote to accept local option taxes. That's just a standard article. That's our, that's our article. Yeah. That's, yeah. Um, appropriation, other points, Post employment benefits, that's our 500. That's the um, yeah. that's article, more or less, right? Yeah, that's, uh, that's our article. You want a recommendation on it? Not right now. Okay. Yeah, well, you, you, yeah we're going to make a recommendation. Yeah, why don't you just put recommendation next to that one? And the same with T44, just for we have to, we have to take a vote on it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And same with the article T46. Recommendation needed. Article T47, recommendation needed. T47, recommendation needed. Now those are, those are your finance uh, group is gonna do those, right? Yeah, the, the, the rest of the uh, articles, except for the Solutions should be finance. Sophie, your hand is up. Yeah, I just quickly, I have a question. Back on the parking minimums, is there ever a concern or discussion about if you don't have parking at apartment buildings that that increases parking on street and it increases enforcement requirements? Um, I'm sure we've had that discussion, but I, I'm not sure that that's, that's sort of an indirect okay. issue. I, I think that's really a zoning board issue. Unless anybody else has any other thoughts on that? So um, go back, we, we, we know we're, what happened to the numbers here? Um, so my thing just closed. So yeah, I guess I missed everything since 
or nothing got saved and or nothing got saved after the last time I saved it. So I will have to go back and look at the recording again. If anyone remembers what number. Okay. Number yeah, you can. Let's not let's not do that now. Why don't you go on to um, right there? Uh, transfer of fund cemetery funds. That's a recommendation. Okay, pro overlay reserves a recommendation. Stabil stabilization funds a recommendation. Stabilization. These are all recommendations. Free cash. Pig access budget. Do we need a hearing on this? Uh, no, we'll, we'll, when I say recommendation, we'll, we'll review it and vote for it uh, on the finance committee. It's a finance committee article. Gotcha. Um, endorsement of the CDGB application. That's, we don't need to do that. That's the Board of Selectman's business. Revolving funds recommendation. That's not ours. Oh, you're right. You're right. That's a that's the board of selectmen. Just cross that out, right? Do we need a hearing on this? No. no. Parking benefit expenditures um, hearing. We'll actually get that when we do the parking budget, right? Correct. So <clears throat> that'll be the hearing, and that'll be the finance. That'll be the financial committee. Um, position reclassification uh, recommendation. Collective bargaining. Um, that is a hearing, which we will get for the town manager at some point. The town manager, okay. Yeah. Um, appropriation town budgets, that's finance committee. This is, it looks like this is the select board and town manager. Well, yeah, but we're going through all the budgets now. So. Oh, okay. okay. That's, that's a uh, big article. And oh, I see. And the I see. capital budget, we'll have the hearing with the capital budget committee on that. That's already scheduled. What do we know about the uh, fiscal year 2022 budget transfer? Anybody know anything about this? Okay, so David, you and um, I think we probably need to have a hearing on this, but, um, or it could be a recommendation by uh, David and Sophie. Find out what it's about. Okay, they have uh, Charlie. They have something to do with ARPA funds. Yes. Yeah, I so I'm happy, Dean. I'm happy Dave taking it, but can if it, I, I know this came up at a school department budget meeting. I can't remember what came up. So if it ends up falling to be a school issue, can we just administratively kick it over to the school budget subcommittee to look at? Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Um. Charlie, I'll check on that tomorrow. Okay. Um, appropriation transportation infrastructure fund. Don't we usually appropriate the last couple of years a very specific amount of money to the penny that we get in a, uh, a grant? Like the busways down in East Arlington? <clears throat> we're done under this. Maybe we should have the manager in it at some point in March just to go through all the, his articles. Yeah, I think that's a good suggestion now. I think anything that says appropriation, we need to have a recommendation. Yeah. Same um, with the uh, blue bikes. 
I didn't we have this vote last year? Uh, actually, Charlie, I'm I'm on this one because you know we've got a blue bikes amount in the in the capital budget, so um, uh, I'm I'm have it on my list to contact Sandy and find out what this money okay. is all about. So, Jonathan, uh, follow up, follow up. This this came up in our capital planning um, when Dave and I interviewed that not capital planning the planning department budget, they said, I think they were expecting to come and talk to us about it, at least that's how they brought it up because they pointed it out to us. Yeah, I, I, I'll check into it because I'm not quite sure why there's additional money being requested here. You, you, you think you have it already in the capital budget? Is that what you're yeah, saying? No, I, I know that we already have, you know, sums in the capital plan for, for blue bikes, including for storage. Um, and um, and for expansion of the of the of the docking systems. So this looks like it's an operating cost. It it might be, um, but um, I, I just have to you know confirm that we pulled okay. out the funds for the for storage relocation and maintenance. And I guess one of the things, if you do, if you do wind up talking to Sandy about that, um, I mean, if, if this is some sort of an ongoing cost, it ought to be in a budget as opposed to foreign articles, I would think. I okay. noticed right. the word borrowing there, which is interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which okay. makes it sound like capital. <laughs> so. Sure it does. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's so. a little confused because you can't borrow for operating expenses. You yeah. know. Anyway, I, I will uh, talk to Sandy about this. And okay. See what's going on. Sewer. That's um, that's basically town manager, but um, there's a so. Should we just vote for it now? It's 800,000. Is that the one that is normally going to come up to 800,000 for the, for the, and, and 1.2 million for the water or something? We have every yeah, year. Yeah, 1.3 for the water. Yeah. 1.3. Um, re recommendation put on there. Well, we'll, uh, we'll have to get the details. This is, um, This also shows up, does this show up in the other category in the capital budget? John Wallach? I'm sorry, no, you're this asking is... if the appropriation for the sewer and water is in the uh, capital budget? I, well, there is, it used to be that there was, um, we always have these two articles and I'm just, yeah. That it was in the other category also in the capital budget. Um, I I, again, we'll we'll have to check on that. Okay. Charlie, we usually but uh, Grant Grant the, these what, this is Grant's article typically, right? Yes. And the and the uh, water and sewer budgets usually have a, a hundred thousand for each of those uh, budgeted. Okay. So the total is a hundred thousand higher. Yeah. Okay. Recommendation um, in both of those. I, Charlie or Mr. Chairman, I think these are needed to be separate because the votes have very specific language from the NWRA uh, that'll be awkward and have to be voted separately as opposed to a line item in the capital budget. You're probably right. Okay. Um, that's another grant giving an article. All right, uh, next article is Minuteman. That's, um, they'll be in next week. That's um, a recommendation. We're having a hearing. Actually, Wednesday the hearing is, right? Yes. Al, do you know, has uh, Arif invited the, the superintendent? Is that who we'll be hearing from? Uh, I, yes. I do not know. 
It's yep. It's all set up. Ed Ed. Um, McQuillan. Okay. Yes. Yep. He's coming on Wednesday. Okay. Okay. The next article: Appropriations Committees and Commissions. So, Tara, you're writing to all of these people, right? Yes. So far, we've only received one request from the Arts and Culture Commission. Everyone okay. else has requested the same amount, and I haven't heard back from everyone, but most people so far. Okay. Um, does the committee want to hear from the Water Bodies Commission? They 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 usually have a relatively big sum, like fifty thousand, sixty thousand dollars, or something like that. Do I hear anything? Are they asking for more money? I haven't heard back from them yet. I mean, I, I, the question is, what are they doing with it? That's right. that's my concern. You know, we usually want to hear their plan. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, follow up with them, Tara. I think we want a hearing. Uh, town celebrations. Uh, we need to get that information from the manager and miscellaneous appropriations. Um, the manager usually puts these things in the back of his budget book. <laughs> yeah, we'll take a look. Uh, that requires the recommendation. We have to vote on that. Um, Oh, there's a separate article for the water bodies fund. That's the one. That's where we. Well, this is is. Okay, maybe I didn't email them. I'll look into that. Yeah, that's. We definitely want to have a hearing on that article. Charlie. Yes, John. Uh, just to go back, I I can confirm that the uh, the. Budget has separate uh, capital line items for water system rehab and sewer rehab. In in the uh, in the other category, right? It's under the DPW. Um, you, you've got uh, you've got. Um, 1.4 million for water system rehabilitation and then additional um, um, additional 900,000 for sewer system rehab. Okay, but that is, uh, that's a, um, in the quote unquote other category. Direct. Yeah, the, we have these two articles every year. It's what I, I believe the former chair used to say, they charge too much and then lend it back to us at zero interest. Right. Um, if you look at articles 59 and 60 from last year's FinCom report, it has the you know, particular recommendation that we can probably just copy paste. Check the right. numbers. Okay. Uh, and the answer to your question is yes, it is, it is classified as other. Yeah. So... Okay. It's, it doesn't go to the five percent, right? So, um, going down past um, the folk school, can you go down a little further, Tara, please? Um, so, community preservation fund. So, we uh, would you contact them? We normally have a hearing and then we endorse their uh, plan. So, we should have a hearing. Um, I think the um, Harry Barber program Council on Aging. Oh, find out if there if did we vote that last year? Does anybody remember? Yeah. I think it's seventy five hundred. Oh okay, wait, so no, we voted zero. No. We voted every year, and it's usually seventy five hundred, but I think one year at the beginning of the pandemic, we changed it to zero. Right. So if it's if it's seventy five hundred, Tara, we don't need to have a hearing. Okay. So just check with the um, 
Council on Aging. Um, the next article is the recommendation, whatever, whatever Tosti's uh, financial group recommends. Um, appropriation design standards. Uh, Charlie, does this one need a recommendation? Yes. Uh, the financial uh, sub working group will determine the recommendation. Um, appropriation design standards. It's an appropriation. Yeah. They're, they're asking so we have me. a hearing. We need a hearing on this. Yeah. Please tell me we don't have to hear any resolutions, Charlie. Ah, good, it's a resolution. All right, thank you, I didn't see that. I was trying to figure out what it was about. Okay, resolutions, we don't need to consider. That's at the end. Okay, so Tara, um, after, you, after you get the, um, recover the, the information from the video on the ones that we went through, uh, if, if you could just update this document and then send it out to the members. Um, yep. We have a reference when we get the correctly numbered document. Okay. okay. And then cool. if I can ask the committee, when you get this document from Tara, please review our comments on it. And, and uh, we can consider again on Wednesday, whether or not, um, whether or not we need to you know, think about any changes. There be there might might be some information coming back from some of the some of the uh, members whose names are attached to some of these uh, Warren articles that we would have to have a hearing or not have a hearing or whatever. So, in other words, let's look at this um, activity today as a first reading, and we may wind up having a second reading before we make a final decision on hearings on all of these articles. Is uh, everybody good with that? Yes. Okay. Um, so there are no other budgets available. Um, is there any anything that anybody wants to bring up for future consideration, new business? All right. It's um, 9.53. It's getting close to the magic hour. Uh, I, I think we're ready for a motion to adjourn. Is there such a motion? So move. Second. Your hand up. No. Did I hear a motion? So yes. move. Yep. Second. Second. Okay. By acclamation, we're adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone. Appreciate your time.